Hardware wallet popularity has really shot up since all of the scams and fraud that happened back in 2022. But there are still a lot of misconceptions out there and I see them down in the comments all the time about what hardware wallets are and how they work. So today I'm gonna set the record straight and debunk the top five myths surrounding hardware wallets. So go down below and smash the like button for crypto security and let's level up your brains. First, let's go ahead and talk about how a hardware wallet like this Ledger Nano S Plus is different than a software wallet that you might find on your iPhone. Think of it this way, a software wallet is just an app on your phone that you carry around in your pocket. It's convenient, but if someone hacks your phone or hacks the wallet software that's available on your phone, you could lose all of your money. Versus a hardware wallet, which is more like a safe deposit box in a bank. Hardware wallets are more secure because the private keys or the keys that allow you to access your cryptocurrency get created offline and stored on this device that is never connected to the internet. And you can push this even farther and use a hardware wallet like the Cold Card Mark IV, which is fully air-gapped, which means that you never connect this Cold Card Mark IV hardware wallet to an internet-connected device. This means that even if your computer or your mobile device gets hacked, your private keys are still gonna be safe. And this makes a lot of people wonder, can I just take the software wallet that's available here on my iPhone and reinitialize that wallet on my Ledger Nano S Plus or whatever hardware wallet that I chose to use? And that might seem like a good idea, but it actually compromises the security of your hardware wallet. Instead, what you should do is create a brand new private key using this hardware wallet and then transfer the funds off of the existing software wallet on your iPhone over to the new wallet that you created using your hardware device. That way you're taking advantage of the security benefits of this hardware wallet. The next big misconception about hardware wallets is where are the coins actually stored? A lot of people think that the coins are stored on this device itself, but that's not the case. This is the most important part of the video, so pay attention. Bitcoin is not stored on hardware wallets. Bitcoin is stored on the block blockchain in an address that has been generated by your private key. Because Bitcoin is stored on the blockchain, even if your hardware device manufacturer goes out of business, you still aren't going to lose your money. You can always access your coins by reinitializing an old hardware wallet onto a new hardware wallet, even if they're from different manufacturers. For example, if you have this Trezor device and Trezor goes out of business, you can restore this Trezor wallet onto this Ledger wallet. To prove this, I did a demo a few weeks ago that I'll leave linked up in the cards. And if every hardware device device manufacturer in the world went out of business, you could build your own hardware wallet using open source hardware from SeedSigner that I'll leave linked down in the description. Some people think that you have to be awake or have your device plugged in to actually receive cryptocurrency to your hardware wallet. But again, because the crypto is stored on the blockchain and not on this device, you can receive your crypto at any time, even when you're sleeping. It's just like a bank account that you set up and you control all by yourself. Except unlike a bank account, your blockchain address is available 20 24-7, 365, even on weekends and bank holidays. So again, the coins are not on the ledger, they're on the blockchain. This hardware wallet is only here to generate my private key blockchain address and to sign transactions to prove that I am the owner of the coins that are in that address. And because this hardware wallet is not connected to the internet and never will be connected to the internet, I can't view the balance of my Bitcoin account or my Ethereum account on this device. Instead, I need to use an internet connected device like my desktop computer or my iPhone, some device that is connected to the internet so that I can read the balance from the blockchain from the address that this wallet wallet created. So, so far we've learned why these hardware devices are safe. It's because they generate your private keys offline and we learned what they do. They sign transactions to prove that you are the owner of the coins that are in this wallet address. Next, let's go ahead and talk about when your coins are not safe in these hardware devices. Hardware wallets are the safest place to store your cryptocurrency, but there are some risks that you need to be aware of. Just because your funds are on a hardware wallet, it doesn't mean that your funds are completely safe from being hacked. In particular, DeFi related hacks are one of the biggest risks because attackers can create malicious smart contracts that try to steal your funds. If you authorize your hardware wallet to interact with a malicious DeFi smart contract, you can lose your money. You can also be rug pulled by high interest yield farming products like Terra Luna and lose your NFTs to NFT phishing attempts. Hardware wallets are not some magical way to be safe from everything in the world and you still need to be very aware what you're putting your money into in this space. That being said, when you do have have a hardware wallet, your cryptocurrency is safe from centralized exchange collapses like Mt. Gox and FTX and Celsius and BlockFi. When those centralized platforms filed for bankruptcy, users that left coins on those centralized platforms lost all of their money. But users who had their funds on a hardware wallet didn't lose anything. This highlights why it is so important to hold your own private keys and to withdraw from any centralized exchanges that you might be using on a regular basis. Always remember the mantra, not your keys, not your coins. Some 
something else to keep in mind is that your crypto is not safe if you rolled your own private key using dice and you didn't provide enough entropy. This can be an issue on devices like cold card that allow you to roll your own seed phrase using up to 100 dice. This topic can be a little bit mathy and complicated to explain, but if you do want to learn more about entropy and its role in creating your seed phrase, I did make a video that I'll leave a link to up in the cards. Finally, it's critical that you never put the seed phrase generated by your hardware wallet online. Don't take a picture of your seed phrase and don't even type it into an internet connected device. The whole point of a hardware wallet is to keep your seed phrase and private keys offline, so keep them that way. Again, while a hardware wallet can provide significant security advantages, it is still really important to be aware of the risks and to take steps to protect yourself. One of the most frequent questions that I get down in the comments is, Rhett, when should I get a hardware wallet? Hardware wallets are expensive and there are free software wallet alternatives that are almost as good, so when is the right time to get one? If you have less than $1,000 of crypto, it doesn't make sense to get a hardware wallet. Don't buy a $100 hardware wallet to store $50 of cryptocurrency. Instead, you should use a software wallet on your mobile phone. I use Blue Wallet and Casa as my Bitcoin only mobile wallets, and I would use something like Exodus Wallet that's available on iOS and Android if I wanted to store other non-Bitcoin cryptocurrencies. Those are wallets that I've used before and that I recommend, but there are a ton of other options out there. You just want to make sure that you're the one that's holding the private keys. The principle I follow for knowing when to get a hardware wallet is very simple. If I wouldn't be comfortable carrying that amount of cash around in my pocket, I'm not going to be comfortable keeping that amount of cash on a mobile wallet on my phone. So with $1,000 of crypto, I think that's about the right time for you to be upgrading your security to a hardware wallet. But if you stay in this for long enough, there will come a time where one hardware wallet is not enough for your security. You probably wouldn't store the deed to your house in your sock drawer. So when you have a meaningful to you or something that you would define as a life-changing amount of money, it's time to start thinking about upgrading your security from one hardware wallet. And the first change that you should make is instead of storing your seed phrase on the flimsy piece of paper that a lot of these hardware wallet companies give to you out of the box, you should store your seed phrase on a bulletproof sheet of titanium. I use crypto tags. They're bulletproof, they're fireproof, they're waterproof, they're even acid proof. And this gives me a ton of peace of mind that my seed phrase is secure from any sort of natural disaster. And if you want an even cheaper option, CoinKite has this great alternative here. I'll leave links to both of these products down in the description. Finally, once you've upgraded your security to a titanium seed phrase, it's time to start thinking about multi-sig. Multi-sig is an advanced security technique that involves using many hardware wallets to secure a single Bitcoin address. You can think of multi-sig as a piggy bank that needs lots of different keys to open it. With a traditional piggy bank, you only need one key to open it and take out the money. But with a multi-sig piggy bank, you might need two out of three keys to open the piggy bank. This means that if one of your keys gets lost or stolen, you can still keep your money safe because the other keys can still access the piggy bank. It's like having a group of friends who each have a piece of a treasure map. You need the map to find the treasure, but if one person loses their piece, you can still find the treasure with the other pieces of the map. So for example, you might use two out of three hardware wallets to send a transaction. So even if I lost this hardware wallet, I could still send the transaction using these two wallets. Multisig provides an extra layer of security because an attacker would need to compromise multiple hardware devices to steal your funds. It also allows for greater control over your funds as you can distribute the keys among different people or devices to reduce the risk of a single point of failure. It's not all upside though, since creating multi-sig wallets can be expensive and they are also harder and slower to use since you need to coordinate several keys to sign one transaction. If multi-sig seems too complicated, you should check out companies like Casa and Unchained Capital. With their collaborative custody models, you give custody of one of your private keys to Casa or Unchained Capital who will hold it for you. And this creates a two of three or a three of five multi-sig, but without the need to manage all of the different hardware devices or seed phrases yourself. So this way in a three of five setup, even if you lost two of your hardware wallets, you would still be able to sign a transaction using your last two hardware wallets and the key from Casa or Unchained Capital. If you're still confused about multi-sig, go down below and leave a comment. I do still respond to all the comments. And if you want to learn more about Casa and Unchained Capital and multi-sig in general, check out this playlist over here. I love you all. See you next week. Whip.